seen a lot of comments in various places where people are concerned about using pins on their fabric because they're worried that it might create a hole that the virus could get through. So I made this video to show why I don't think this is something to worry about when making a face mask out of woven cotton fabric. Disclaimer first, I am not a medical professional or a scientist. This does not constitute medical advice. This is based solely on research that I have done, but I would encourage you to conduct your own research into best practices for making face masks. First off, a face mask is not considered personal protective equipment or PPE. The function of a cotton face mask is primarily to reduce the spread of the virus by people who are sick and also by asymptomatic carriers. Studies have shown that even a simple fabric face covering is helpful in trapping respiratory droplets, which helps to reduce the spread. And I have links in the description to some of the information on this. A simple fabric face covering, however, is less effective in preventing you from inhaling the virus when it is in the air. It does reduce this more than wearing nothing at all, but it's nowhere near as good as wearing an N95 mask though N95 masks should be strictly reserved for healthcare providers and vulnerable populations. Since a fabric face covering reduces the spread of the virus, if everyone wears one when out public, then we all have a reduced chance of getting it. Because by wearing one, we have reduced the chance of us spreading it to other people, and by other people wearing it, they have reduced the risk of spreading it to us. Secondly, woven cotton fabric already has holes in it that are larger than the virus. So even though studies have found that a two-layer mask made with thicker, high-quality, 100% cotton fabric is the best material for a fabric face mask, the holes between the weave of the cotton fibers will already be bigger than the virus. Then when you pin through the fabric, the pin will follow the path of least resistance, which means it will typically go through a hole that is already there between the fibers instead of splitting the fibers. It will just push the fibers aside and make that hole a little larger. But when you wash the fabric again, the gentle tugging of the fabric that happens in the wash will shrink the holes back down. To demonstrate this, I've taken a photo of fabric with a macro lens, then poked five holes within the circled area, then gently tugged the fabric in both directions. You can see here that the largest hole the pin created in this fabric, then after tugging, it is no bigger than the other holes that were already in the fabric. Here, I've done the same thing with a higher quality cotton quilting fabric. The fibers in this fabric are smaller and it has a higher thread count, so the holes start off being smaller than with the other fabric. Because of that, when I poke it with a pin, the holes become more apparent, but you can see that after a light tug, it closes them back up. Another material that is found to be very effective for masks are blue shop towels. There is a link in the description for some of the research done with this material. This is a non-woven fiber, and using it as a filter layer inside a mask will make it more effective. With this material, you would not want to put a pin through it, nor sew through it. As you see here, the holes are still very prominent even after tugging at the material. If you're still concerned about pinning your fabric but prefer pinning over wonder clips or fabric weights, you can use ballpoint pins, which are designed to slip between the fibers rather than splitting them, or silk pins, which are thinner, thus creating smaller holes. I hope this helps alleviate some of the concerns around using a straight pin to pin your cotton fabric when making masks. 